Here are the facts. I could have gotten a haircut before filming this. Hannah after her haircut looks so good. But I didn't, and that's okay. You know what else is okay? Talking about your gastrointestinal health. Everybody poops sometimes. Something I really have to share, which is a journey that I've been on for like the last three years. A journey that has come to a conclusion I did not expect or desire. But hey, that's what's up. And now it's time for me to move on and just accept it. Acceptance, the end. <sighs> okay, so um, here, here I go. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something big and uh, and it's big, but I'll tell you at the end. So let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, I was born. After that, I began to age. And throughout the process of aging these 35 years, I always had, um, let's just say a, uh, uh, um, I don't wanna say, uh, 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 uh. People talk about like bathroom stuff. <sighs> I can't even. This is why I haven't filmed this video, because I'm not a potty person. A lot of times, a lot of times when people talk about bathroom stuff, they're talking about, um, let's say like a, like an onslaught, like a mass exodus. Let's say like a comically trying to make it to the bathroom in time before having a hilarious disaster. Yippee. But you know, it feels like it's a lot more part of the conversation um, than conversations like, oh, I haven't pooped in five days. And in 2019, I really was probably only going going to the bathroom number two, uh, like every three or four days on average. I mean, that had been my regular life function. I lived that way. I just kind of thought, oh, I guess I have a slow metabolism. Oh, I guess just, I'm sure people don't go number two. People don't go to the bathroom every day. That's insane. Maybe every other day. But this was very much a problem I kept to myself, you know, because if I mentioned it, it was like, oh, maybe you should eat more fiber. Or it was like, oh, are you stressed out? Or it was like, oh, well, maybe uh, you have a, maybe you're sick or something, I don't know. And long story short is that every time I brought it up, I was like, is this something of concern? No matter how much coffee or Adderall or exercise or diet changes I make, AKA eat more fiber, that was the only thing I was ever told, I just can't seem to uh, uh, function in this way in a regular manner. And that lasted up until about 2019 when it became a real problem because not only was the uh, the second half of my 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 digestive process, you know, non-functional, but then the first half, the upper half started to get really reactive. And that's not something you can keep private. If you're having a meal and someone's sitting across from you and you're like, "Uh-huh," cuz you're doubling over in pain, people are gonna ask questions. Or if you wake up and you throw up, or if you're in bed in the middle of the night and you start throwing up, it's gonna be a little bit sus. But that doesn't mean you're gonna get answers right away. And that was my experience. So in 2019, my stomach got really, really bad. You know, I was used to being pretty pissed off at my pooper, but oh, hi, baby girl. Hi, wife. Are you going? Come and hug me, I'm being so brave. Thank you. Have fun at the beach. She's going to the beach, bitch. <sighs> Uh, what, what a different, different time. I'm gonna pause it. Okay. Where, where was I? Oh, right, 2019. So 2019 comes along, great year, la la la. At this point, I think, man, maybe I have like an ulcer or something because every time I eat, more often than not, I get this really terrible sharp, 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 like I'm digesting shards of glass feeling. Or when I eat, I feel immediately full or when I eat, I feel immediately nauseous. And so all of that had combined to be a problem I really, really, really couldn't ignore because I was starting to feel like I was kind of in a flu state all the time. Or I would get this lower, like really tight, bloated gas feeling, which would literally make my pants fit differently. I mean, I don't know what to say. Like if you're like constipated and bloated, you feel like shit, man. Like you're tired, you're exhausted. Something is not happening correctly somewhere down the line. Yeah, so it took me, um, so even after, so, so at the point where it was like pretty public, uh, and by public, I mean like, I could not share a meal with someone without something happening. That's when I really went to the doctor and went 
through the same cycle of questions and very frustrating answers and zero results. But the one result I did get was that they tested me for something called SIBO, which is like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, uh, which is treated with antibiotics, which basically just kind of nukes your entire gastrointestinal lining and resets it to zero. You follow me, you copy. If you don't, ask questions in the comments below. Yeah, so I went to a GE, a gastroenterologist, and they put me in touch with somebody who was like, quote unquote, a SIBO specialist. And the first thing the SIBO specialist told me was that I didn't have SIBO. And that the antibiotics weren't going to help. Uh-oh. And that was great. That was great. It was great. Because the next thing she said was, so let's figure out what's going on. So to figure out what was going on was twofold. One, I needed to start regularly pooping at all. Now the GE was super helpful with this. I got put on a medication called Motegrity, um, which is used to treat chronic idiopathic constipation. Idiopathic just means we don't know what causes it. I, a lot of times I think that people, when they say idiopathic, I think they might mean childhood body trauma but whatever. Anyway, I started taking Motegrity, which is actually a serotonin. Anyway, I started taking Motegrity every day and Motegrity is actually like a serotonin receptor. And so what it was doing was taking my lower intestinal colon body area and treating it for its depression. The good news is the Motegrity works great. Oh my God, it really worked. And I gotta tell you guys, not only the physical relief, but the mental relief of having A, a medication that was like very directly doing its job and B, straight up pooping every day. That was life changing. And thank God, thank God, I spent a year on Motegrity and I'm happy to say that uh, you know, the uh, <laughs> only thing, no, uh, you know, uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna make a joke about regular, irregular, but I don't really like those kind of words anyway. Anyway, so good news is, butt is great, butt's in great shape, poopers going, things are happening. Woo, 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 woo. The issue is, is that I still could not eat without throwing up. I still could not eat without pain. I couldn't eat without being nauseous. I still felt like I was in this constant flu state. So the SIBO specialist uh, nutritionist that I went to see who told me it was not SIBO actually tested my blood to see if I was anemic or to see if I had any other reasons that might be causing this kind of exhaustion fatigue feeling. And da 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 da, it turns out I was anemic, super anemic. My ferritin level was at like four and I started taking iron supplements. Now, the liquid iron I was taking, one of the warnings was, warning may cause constipation, but the good news is I was pooping regularly. So woohoo, woohoo, look at this great series of events. Boy oh boy. So I started taking liquid iron supplements to help my uh, blood be, you know, just, just to, just to help. And honestly, um, I think everyone who feels chronic exhaustion should get tested for their ferritin levels very specifically, or their iron, like a full anemia panel, because my energy level was super, super changed once I started finally taking liquid iron. The other part of this video is all about my stomach, my upper intestine which did not come out unscathed, unfortunately. And thus, will take us to today. Cool. So, for whatever reason, my stomach has aged. So the next step in figuring out what was going on with my stomach was to do an elimination diet and do some food journaling. And I got, I, t I'm t I got it, I got to show you guys. This is some detailed food journaling. Look, I'm looking at one of my journals from the past. Ugh, ugh. I'm talking breakfast, 8:40 a.m. Plain chicken, green beans, hunger level 10. I'm tracking my hunger, my fatigue my bowel movements, any other digestive symptoms, the time of day I get tired, what level things are at, breakfast, meal two, meal three, dinner, a quarter cup of black beans plus white rice. I, I'm just everything, everything, everything. This particular journal I'm just glancing at is February 25th through February 29th 
of 2020. So after about six weeks of food journaling, like really, really thorough food journaling, and going through this whole process, I found out that ba -ba -da -ba, the foods that were upsetting my stomach uh, were foods that were called FODMAPs. What's a FODMAP? <clears throat> Fermentable oligosaccharide, disaccharide, monosaccharide, and polyols, which are short chain carbohydrates that the small intestine absorbs poorly. So yeah, that's a FODMAP. And it turns out that to be comfortable and not in physical pain and not vomiting and not being nauseous and to actually eat food that my body could absorb and get nutrients from, I would have to change my diet and my lifestyle um, to be a low FODMAP diet and lifestyle. And so we started doing that in spring of 2020 and it broke my heart. Can I tell you some foods that have high FODMAPs that I've tested and that I can no longer eat without knowing why I'm in pain? It's not that I can't eat them anymore in the same way you can shoot yourself in the foot. You can, you know, go a day without water. You can, I don't want to, it's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt my body. Um, but yeah, here are some of the foods that I miss a lot. Okay, wow, this one's website just says fruit. All fruit, just fruit. Let's talk about fruit, Hanny. Sounds good. Here's some examples of fruits that are high, uh, have high FODMAPs. Bum ba da bum, apples, apricots, ripe bananas, blackberries, boysenberries, cherries, currants, dates, all dried fruit, grapefruit, mango, nectarine, peach, pear, persimmon, plum, prunes, which might be why the high fiber yada yada never helped with my constipation at all and just made me feel really guilty and sad like I was doing something wrong. But yeah, it turns out fiber was not helping. And peaches, prunes, plums, blah, 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 watermelon also, and many more. Let's move on before I start to cry. In terms of grains, barley, rye, and wheat. I miss gluten very much. Let's talk about vegetables, right? Vegetables are good for you, right? Vegetables shouldn't make you feel sick, right? Ha 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 ha. You're the vegetables I can't digest. Artichokes, asparagus, beets, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, garlic, mushrooms, onions, peas, cabbage, snow peas, snap peas, sun-dried tomatoes, and more. Let's just keep going. I can eat lots of forms of protein, just as long as there's no garlic and onion. So basically, we just don't go out to eat anymore, and that's a big sacrifice Ella makes, and I'm really, really, really grateful. <clears throat> but not all protein. Let's talk about beans, aka legumes. Uh, I let, uh, hello, I'd like to book the flight with extra legume room. Like leg room? Baked beans, probably because of garlic and onion. Black beans, borlotti beans. I don't even know what that bean is. I never even got the chance to eat that bean. Broad beans, fava beans, kidney beans, lima beans, navy beans, pinto beans, silken tofu, soybeans, Soy flour, soy milk, and split peas. Um, great. Yep. Woohoo. Let's talk about other things like beverages. In terms of alcohol, no rum, which is fine. I've never liked it anyway. Most fruit juices, oolong, chamomile, or any black tea, or any kombucha tea. Green tea's okay, as long as it's not on an empty stomach. And, and more, honestly. Um, I mean, I have a whole dictionary on my phone that helps me track uh, and keep track of foods I can and can't eat because I test it a lot. I test it all the time. And that's how I know it's really true. And that sucks because I don't want it to be true, but I test it all the time. For instance, I'll be like, not really though. Like black beans are good for you and asparagus, right? I love veg Brussels sprouts. How could that possibly hurt me? And then I will eat them and then I will be in pain and that's that, man. If I don't get sick or throw up, I mean, you, I can't tell you the number of times that I thought I had done something bad to myself and all it was was there was too much garlic powder or onion or anything that had made me get so sick. And the symptoms are like flu symptoms. It's like body aches, headaches, stomach, nausea, and vomiting. And I didn't do it to myself. 
But it is true, and it is true, and it's outside of my control. And I had to, and that's it. Now you know, okay? Now you know. There's a whole lot of stuff I can't eat, and it sucks. And I'm ready now in 2022. I mean, it's taken me a long time to accept this fact, but now I'm ready to like move forward in my life and heal my relationship to food because I know what's gonna hurt me and what's not gonna hurt me. And yeah, I built an entire career off food and drink. And now that is gonna shift and change for me. And that's a blessing too, because hey, it was making me really sick for good reason. So anyway, if you have gastrointestinal health issues, I believe you, I believe you. If you're having a whack time with your pooper, I believe you. If you're having a whack time with your stomach or you feel nauseous or bloated or you're cramping, I believe you. I really believe you and I encourage you to go and try and get some answers. If you've lived with constipation your whole life, go try and get an antidepressant for your butt. Maybe it'll help. It really helped me. If you've, if sometimes when you're eating you get sharp shooting pains in your upper stomach, you know, that could be a sign of something. I, that's legitimate. You don't have to live with heartburn and reflux and all this icky body painful stuff that makes us ignore our relationship to our body just because there's a way to numb ourselves from the pain. Like if you have the support it takes to go on the kind of journey I went on these last couple of years, I really encourage you to do it. And if you don't have that kind of support, here's me supporting you. I think you're worth it. I think your body's worth it. I found out I was worth it and I'm ready to just keep living in this new time. So yeah, that's it. That's me. I uh, love you very much. I hope you have a great day. Uh, see you soon. Bye. Da, da, da. We did it. Look at us healing wounds, filming videos in a kitchen. Wow. Wow. Next thing you know, she'll get a haircut. Wow. Wow. No, for real, I'm getting a haircut tonight. Okay, bye. Mwah.